Yo, what's up, everybody? How's it going? Today, we're doing something a little bit unusual. So I'm working on a bit of a secret project. It's not really secret, but basically sometime next year, I'm hoping to launch a new YouTube channel. Like, don't worry, we, 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 this one still sticks around. I'm just like a second one, something in addition. Only after Alex is done, though. So there's a bit of time until then. However, for that new YouTube channel, uh, I want to do some research. In particular, something I want to do is I want to watch all of the internationals. Just all of them. <laughs> of course, recently we saw a TI-10, but, you know, TI-10 sort of implies that there were other TIs. In fact, there were nine more internationals. And I wanted to actually just go and watch all games of all internationals. Now, of course, that's a lot of international to watch that's gonna take a little while so i thought why don't we do this together it might be interesting it might be fun i don't know i have no idea if this is gonna do well on youtube if it does then we'll do more of it if it doesn't then we won't uh, but today we are watching the very first international game not just the very first international but the very first game of the very first international. This game doesn't even have commentary. This is on the Dota 2 TI YouTube channel. And it's... It, so this game was played before Dota was even publicly available. There, there just wasn't... You just couldn't even play Dota 2 when this was played. So be ready for the game to look and feel a little differently. It's gonna be versus Tai Lu. It's gonna be Tai Lu versus OK Nirvana CN. It's the group stage of the Dota 2 International, the first million dollar tournament, which at the time was an absolutely mind blowing amount of money. And yeah, we're just gonna watch it. I think that's really all I need to say in terms of context. If you guys are curious as to what YouTube channel thing I'm working on, planning on, um, we will probably explain it at some point in the future. Uh, right now, I don't really want to get into it. But uh, if you are dying out of curiosity, just show up on a stream sometime and I'll explain it to you there. So anyway, Tai Lu versus OK, uh, OK Nirvana C. And you can see the interface for the drafting is a little different. It's not as fancy as it is today. And there's also noticeably way less bands right so back in the day you had a band stage at the beginning then a pick stage then another band stage and then another pick stage so it went two bands each three picks each two bands each two picks each we're going to go ahead and uh, speed this up a little bit though while we are in the drafting though just because you know we don't want to we don't want to spend too much time on this now Something that's really important to remember here is that not all of the heroes were available. Not even all of the Walker 3 heroes, right? Not even all of the heroes that were in Dota 1 were available at this international. So I can't really do much in terms of analysis because I honestly don't know what heroes people could even pick because I just, I just don't know. I, I have no idea. Hopefully we can get some data on that uh, and then maybe the next video I do like this we, you know, actually know what hero pool was available. But yeah, uh, so you can see there's just some heroes being picked up. These are just the heroes that we know and love, of course, although of course they're going to be a little different. Lich, for example, had an entirely different ability. Actually, two of his abilities were entirely different compared to what they are today. Windrunner, I think, is mostly the same. Power Shot was a channel at the time, so slightly different. Earthshaker and Ventral Spirit. Oh, look at these portraits. I don't know if it's good or bad that um, Windranger still looks exactly like she does today. Oh, she's Windrunner then. Oh, yeah, that's true. She's not Windranger. She's Windrunner. Oh, that is so funny. But yes, um, so Windrunner. <laughs> so Windrunner looks exactly like she does today, which I guess could you could see as like a problem with the fact that that model still looks exactly the same today. Um, yeah, no, I, I think that that would be a fair assessment to make. But you can already see like the map a little bit in the bottom left corner, where there's Roshan in the Dire side, and you can also see the jungle paths are just really fundamentally different. 
Uh, but of course, the core idea of the whole game is still the same. Oh, Weaver. I wonder if Weaver had anything different back then. Definitely didn't have the Arganims, I know that for sure. Vengeful Spirit at the time had a base damage aura. Like, that's what she had. I know that was, uh, like, a big deal. It's also kind of fun to see Earthshaker just being picked up. Because Earthshaker has just always been, like, one of the best heroes in the game. Just because he got such fundamentally powerful abilities. Turns out, if you give a hero free stuns, then the hero is good. Right? Crazy how that works out. Alright, second round of bans. And isn't this nice how fast this drafting stage is? I kind of miss this. I gotta say, look, I know, I know, I know, with 122 heroes as opposed to like 60 or something that we're in the game at this moment, you kind of need a bigger drafting stage, but I think it's just kind of cool that it's just so snappy, right? I don't know. But yeah, uh, Beastmaster also looks a little bit funky, doesn't he? <laughs> oh, oh, it's Fat Storm Spirit! It's Fat Storm Spirit! I forgot about Fat Storm Spirit! Oh, that is so funny. <laughs> it's Fat Storm Spirit. Oh my god. How cool is that? Oh, I'm so excited about Fat Storm Spirit, actually. <laughs> that is so sick. Okay. Alright, very, very nice. So, uh, let's see what else we get here. Venomancer is being banned out. You can see there's a whole bunch of like heroes that have different icons, but also some that actually like kept this. Like Enigma is still the same as today, Weaver is the same as today, but Windrunner, Beastmaster, uh, Vengeful of course is very different. Like the Ven Vengeful icon is just crazy different. Now I would guess that that is, that is gonna be the safe lane Weaver. And is this still tri-lane meta? Oh, that's gonna be interesting. I don't know if people still remember Tri-Lane Meta. I, I get the feeling a lot of people will be maybe a little caught off guard by how these players will play. But honestly, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. I honestly couldn't tell you if this tournament was played in Tri-Lane Meta. <clears throat> okay, we've got three more picks to go. Both teams are running low on time. Puck coming out. I think we can still expect another carry on the side of Nirvana and then Tai Lu. Ooh. Is that a support Windrunner? I would guess that's a support Windrunner, right? Enigma is probably actually going to jungle. And there's Witch Doctor. Okay, so there's another support then. <laughs> and and then the mid Beastmaster. Maybe? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think the Windrunner might be Awfully, I, I, we'll see, we'll see. I honestly, I, I don't have enough context right now to make these guesses. I'm trying to remember old school metas and I just don't even know. This is a classic combo. Okay, let me go ahead and slow this down again. Oh my god, look at this map. The fountain wasn't elevated at the time. Yeah, it was something that was added later. Also, look at this fat ass UI. Oh, it's such a huge UI here. Isn't it kind of crazy? I don't know. Here, one sec. I gotta scoot my stuff around a little bit. Anyway. Huge ass UI. Alright. Beastmaster's got axes. What a funny icon. Smoke is still here, though. So we've got smoke at the very least. But yeah, a kind of a classic combo. Honestly, the, the Drow Ranger with the Vengeful. Because... Wait, does Vengeful have some sort of axe? Weird. Oh! Weaver! Get out of there! Okay, we've got the bounce, but Fisher, we were still trapped. Not Weaver, sorry, uh, Pugna. Oh my god, bad commentary, sorry. The Pugna goes down, no big deal, no big deal. Draw Ranger gonna try to run away, they're chasing her into the tower, and I think they get that kill too, yeah, very nice. Are they gonna get this fella as well? Oh man, that's... That's a big fight right away, do they have enough for this? They do! <laughs> <laughs> That's a start and a half, isn't it? Free and all for Tai Lu here. Okay, now this is where I'm really curious. is How are these lanes going to work out? I think this is a tri-lane. 
Yeah, look at the minimap. Look at the minimap. The the Earthshaker's going top, along with the Drow Ranger and the Vengeful Spirit. You've got the Pugna in the mid, I think, and then the Punk, the Puck in the bottom lane. This is how Dota was played for such a long time. This was just normal Dota, right? You got the Beastmaster in the mid as well. Double damage. Oh my god. Minute one double damage. Yes. That was a thing. You could get that. Power up runes spawned at minute one. They just spawned in the way they always would. Which meant you could get a double damage or illusion rune at minute one. And you would just win the lane. <laughs> you would just win the lane in that moment. Alright. So the Windrunner is off lane. And then uh, the Beastmaster is mid. And then there are three heroes, I believe. No, two heroes. There's the Weaver with the with the Witch Doctor in the bottom lane. And then the Enigma currently also heading into the bottom lane. Although I think the Enigma was just buying some time until the jungle becomes available. Because yes, I think this is actually just straight up a jungling Enigma. <laughs> Which is also kind of crazy. I don't know. But that easy camp was blocked off. Ah, I wish I could. I wish I could move the camera myself. This is one where I really I want to look at the old map and everything. But sorry, guys. I, obviously, I don't have any control over the camera, right? Anyway, the puck is just kind of hanging out down here. It's trying to farm up, but having a hard time. It is difficult to go up against that many folks. And yeah, this is just a try lane. So for a very long time in Dota. This is this was the meta. Now, what I mean with that is this was the meta at like a higher skill level. Um, at low skill levels, at like pub levels, most people play 2-1-2, right? Which was just very simple. Two people in each lane, one player in the mid, right? That's kind of what is also the case today. That is, wow, that's a long cast range on that magic missile. Wow, that was a long cast range on that magic missile. Dude, that cast range blows me away a little bit. No, but 2-1-2 two, two, one, two was kind of the standard in pub games, but in competitive Dota and higher level play overall, you would play with three players in one lane, one player mid, and one player in the offlane. Usually. Sometimes you would play uh, an aggressive try lane where you had your try lane go up against the opponent's try lane. The idea there was that you just get more money on your uh, carry and then you win with that now you might be like wait how's that different from today today there are more resources available for supports first of all you don't have to buy couriers anymore you don't have to upgrade the courier that all costs money somebody had to pay pay for it you don't have to buy wards that cost money tp scrolls were way more expensive they were 135 gold you had, I think, less passive gold at this point in time as well. Where I think in at this point in Dota, you got 60 passive GPM, one a second. While in uh, modern Dota, you actually get 100 passive GPM. So you just kind of get more that way, right? Modern Dota also has more overall gold coming in as long as you're just nearby for kills. While old school Dota didn't give you that much. And then, of course, there's like other mechanics, like, for example... You get bonus gold for stacking creep camps. And uh, you can just get neutral items, which make you more powerful. On top of that, your hero is probably just way more powerful today than it would be back in the day. The stats, stat growth, base stats, all of that has just risen up over time. I mean, Pugna back then, I don't know what his stats growth was, but I can promise you it wasn't like, what is it today? 5.5 .5 int gain? No way. So, the money was more sparse, which meant that if you could get one hero to be really powerful, then that would work out really well for your team, because you could feed on the enemy supports much, much more easily. All right, quick little stun, Draw Ranger coming in. This is when Draw Ranger still had... Uh, oh, Draw Ranger was really different back then. Okay, your Q is still pretty much the same. It didn't do damage at the time. I think it was just as slow. The Gust, I think, was also mostly the same. Just the silence. I don't know if it had the pushback. It may not have had the pushback. But 
her E and her ultimate were really different and they were really different for a long time. And this is something that was actually very popular. It's called a Drow Ranger strat. You may notice that four heroes on the dire side actually how are ranged heroes, right? Um, now this, probably you didn't think twice about this, right? No big deal, like, don't make a fuss about it. The thing is that this was actually a strategy back in the day because of Drow Ranger's aura and her ultimate. Where what her aura did is it gave all ranged units on your team, um, that includes summons but not creeps, but it gave all ranged allied units bonus attack damage based on the Drow Ranger's agility. And her ultimate just gave her agility, right? It still had the caveat of needing to not have an enemy within range, but the ultimate just gave like 40 agility at level one. So you just, oh, no, Avoke, get out of there. Bananas right behind you. Man, Chinese daughter names are still so good. All right, but there's a big roar. They're gonna go for the puck. Oh, that was still going? That was still traveling? Oh my god, I can't believe that that was actually still traveling after all of that time. That is wild. That must be moving really slowly. <laughs> okay. So, Drown Ranger's, Drown Ranger's uh, kind of purpose as a hero was not so much to be that powerful herself. She really actually wasn't that powerful. But what she did do is she made all ranged heroes on your team hit really, really hard. She just bought power dreads at the side shop. I want to go back. Chat, I want to go back. <laughs> I want to, I want to, this, oh my God. Oh, this is, this is peak Dota. I want to go back, Chad. Can we just, this, I, oh man. <laughs> She just bought power treads at the side shop. You totally could. That was a thing. You could totally buy power treads at the side shop. Because, like, that was the one full boot that they actually sold. Ah, oh, that is so good. I love that. I love that so much. Fisher? On what? Come on. Who's doing the camera? <laughs> Why are we looking at this guy? All right. I miss the side shop. That's something I definitely miss. Also, uh, I'm hoping to get to see this soon, but Roshan isn't where you might expect him. Like, chat, look at the minimap. See where Roshan is at. Yeah, he's right here. Right here. Up there. You gotta just look up a little bit. That's where he hangs out. Camera's probably automatic. I don't know. Maybe? I don't know. This is, again, this is the oldest recording, like the first upload on this channel that is an actual Dota game. So, I don't know if they would have an automatic camera at this point, and I don't know if they would trust an automatic camera with this. I think that probably there was somebody actually doing the camera, and they just weren't that good at it. But, I, I don't know. I'm not not so sure. Oh, look at that old soul ring icon. That's funny. Yeah, Enigma has been jungling, by the way. Oh, that was just totally a thing. You just put the Enigma in the jungle. He can jungle. So why wouldn't you? Right? That's just more money you can make that way. Also, only two jungles, not four, right? With the one ancient camp in the kind of like other area. But they were also just way less creeps on the map. I guess that's something that's kind of noteworthy. Anyway, I was talking about the Drow Ranger strats. So Drow Ranger strats were really, really powerful um, because it just made your team hit really hard so you could push really easily. Drow Ranger Vengeful was kind of a continuation of that where the idea was just to increase your pushing potential, your damage output, even more by mixing in the Vengeful aura, which at the time just gave bonus base damage. So now all of a sudden, everybody on your team hits really, really hard. If you wanted to be really funny, you could even mix in Luna, at which point you have this triple aura threat that just makes everybody hit super crazy hard. Was orb effects a thing back then? Oh yeah, everything was a thing back then. I also just TP scrolls in the inventory. You just had to carry your TP scrolls. Also, you may notice that the Enigma, 
has an item in his stash and he isn't getting it. Why? Because he's not allowed to use the courier. There's only one courier. And unless you are the mid, you don't get to use it. <laughs> That's just how it was. Right? Admittedly, this might also just be the enigma not wanting to use it for just that single thing. But the courier was often monopolized by the mid. Because what they would do is they would put the bottle on the courier. So they would bring in the bottle, drink the bottle empty, and then put the bottle back on the courier. Oh yeah, it was just like an AoE silence. It wasn't a pushback at all. Oh, yeah, it was just the same effect as uh, the, the Death Prophet. It was just the same ability. They were totally just the exact same ability. Oh, man. Takes you back, doesn't it? Anyhow. So, with the Draw Ranger strat, you would... Um, Again, you would just kind of use that to push. I don't know if this was a thing she already had at this point or if this was something she gains later. But at some point, Drow Ranger got the ability to activate the aura that it also applies to allied um, creeps. And then you would use that to push the entire map, which made it so that her entire team always had this constant presence of pushing down the enemy base. Which was really interesting. And now that I think about it, I think it's actually a tragedy that they changed her from that. Because now she's just... She, I guess she right-clicks. I don't know. I don't know. Like, at the time, Visage Jaw Ranger was a really cool strat. Because the Visage birds, they attack very quickly, right? So what you would do is you would use the Visage birds with the Jaw Ranger aura... She activates the aura, the birds get the aura, and then she shoots them down. Shoots shoots with them. <laughs> and then the birds do a ton of damage. But uh, these days, uh, Jar Ranger is just kind of like another another carry with an AoE farming ability. And um, yeah, I don't know. That's a little, it's a little sad now that I think about it. I kind of miss that old Jar Ranger. She was really different, felt really different. Oh, there's the little orb. Yeah, you fly over there, friend. You go hang out over there. Got a bottle now on this puck as well. It's a little debatable. Uh, there was definitely something of a um, disagreement on how many bottles you could have. You would never have more than two. But uh, sometimes you would have mid players get mad if they saw somebody else having a bottle because they're just like, no, 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 I, I, I get all of the runes. <laughs> because at the time, no bounty runes. No water runes. One rune every two minutes and that's all you get. So what you needed to do to fill up your bottle is you needed to bottle fairy a lot of the time. Just kind of a silly strategy if you ask me. Can they get this? Ooh. I don't know. Seems Pagna is going to be fine. Oh, gets an early mecha. Very good. What is bottle fairying? Bottle fairying is when you use the courier to walk into the mid lane. You put your empty bottle on the courier, and then the courier walks all the way back into the base. Because the bottle is in the base, it gets filled up again, and then you have the courier bring it to you again. You get the bottle, you drink it empty, you put it back on the courier, and you just kind of keep doing that. This is A, a really stupid mechanic, because it's just something that you always have to do constantly, non-stop. B, it's a really stupid mechanic, because it just made it so that the mid lane wasn't really about resources, it was mostly just about controlling the enemy. Um, with sheer power and um, kind of like forcing your will on them, which, I don't know. It was, there wasn't really much nuance to the mid lane. And third, it was really stupid because it used up the courier for the entirety that it was done, making it... Look at how empty this is. Or like how tight it is, I guess. There's nothing... Like, it's just cliffs. <laughs> weird. It feels so weird. Oh, man. All right, Invest, do they have a roar? They have a... They have an Enigma stun. Oh, they just go for a black hole. I mean, if you can get the Draw Ranger, that's a big kill. And it seems like it. Yeah, 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 they get it. Earthshaker wants to kind of walk in there, but a bit afraid. At the time, the Paka ultimate wasn't the most impressive thing. Because it just kind of didn't do that much damage. You used, usually, you mostly use Puck because it was really difficult to kill. Kind of like you do today. It's just today the ultimate is a bit more dangerous, which uh, I think is good. 
Oh yeah, Beastmaster didn't have two buttons. He just had one button that summoned both the bird and the dog. <laughs> How hard it was to kill a hero back then? Radiance yeah, it took a while. You just don't have as much damage. Oh, Viva is going Radiance. Right. Yeah, that was just the thing. You just go Radiance. Totally. 100%. You may also have noticed that the Viva just went to the secret shop to buy the Radiance himself. Why didn't he just go and have the courier bring it to him? Or like, not the Radiance, but the, the Relic, right? Now, part of that might have just been because the Viva was close to the secret shop or that the courier was busy. Could be both. I'm not saying it can't be those things. But there was a definite um, there was a definite kind of fear with big expensive items like a sacred relic. Because if you put them on the courier and the courier gets killed, the courier has dropped all of the items that were on it. They would they would drop all of the items. So there was this really famous Dota 1 clip of a Phantom Lancer farming up a Radiance, which was a standard item on the hero at the time. And the Phantom Lancer had a Sacred Relic, put it on the Courier, and then the Courier was sniped out, and the Phantom Lancer lost the Relic. And I, I, I promise you, as soon as that clip kind of like became popular in the community, everybody was like, oh no, I'm never putting that on a courier again. <laughs> Funnily enough, that game actually got a little famous because the Phantom Lancer lost the relic and then managed to farm up another one like at a really fast pace for the time. But yeah, it seems we're just pushing. Pakna going for pretty similar item build to today, honestly. I mean, the hero hasn't changed that much. I think Pakna is one of those that's mostly stayed the same. You can also see he serves pretty much the exact same role, which is just using Q to blast down towers. But the big advantage that the Dire side has here is they just have that Drow Ranger. So the Dire simply deals way more damage. I'm surprised that the Radiant is just willing to take this kind of like back and forth. Look, there's Roshan up there. Alright, we've got the bugs. It seems that the Ventral is going to be going down right there. Your vital hey, there's Rashad. He's just hanging out. Look at him. He's right there. He's right there. I don't know. It just makes me happy to see Rashad hanging out right there. Watching this, these players feels like they're 1000 to 2000 MMR. These were the best players in the world at this point in time. These players were all hand-chosen and invited. The first international was an invite-only tournament. So these are by far the best players. <laughs> I know, it feels very different, doesn't it? I wouldn't say that they are like bad players compared to like today's overall, but it just had a very different vibe to, to it. Oh, there's the magic missile. They could just kind of trying to keep the Enigma away. I think Enigma's Enigma's gonna go ahead and go TP home. Sea King? Sea King? Oh, they get it! That's a big kill. Taking down the Drow Ranger is a really, really important kill. So if you can get that, it's beautiful. TP out? Come on! Oh my god! The TP King. For sure. Wind Ranger, by the way. Wind Runner, sorry. Wind Runner. Not skilling her ultimate. Pretty common stuff at the time. I mean, you can kind of even see that today with support Windrunner, but yeah, that's just her ultimate was just kind of bad. <laughs> I know that may seem weird, and I honestly couldn't tell you what exactly made it bad. I just remember that it was just not good. You mostly just used Windrunner because she was hard to kill and had a stun. And I guess Power Shot wasn't too bad. Windrunner's ultimate didn't allow you to move and hit at that time. Oh yeah, that was definitely a thing. But even besides that, I think there was something else that just... I think its numbers were just kind of not that good. I don't know, but yeah, you definitely couldn't couldn't run and attack at the same time. You needed to just... Oh, look at that huge stack of Ancients. Did you guys see that huge stack of Ancient Creeps? Killing that, usually a team effort. Because you only had this one area of Ancients, right? So, there was oftentimes, a, well, for both sides actually, there was a big open space in front of it. So you would just stack it up hundreds of times. Like, seriously, you could get huge, huge Ancient stacks. But past a certain point, they just became too powerful. It was really difficult to kill them. So, 
it was usually just a team effort. You would stack them up as a team and then you would take them down as a team. <clears throat> yep, I think that's what we're going to see here. No, smoke. Okay. All right. All right, just going to kind of see if they... Or, no, they're, they're smoking up to stack the ancient camp. It appears. <laughs> All right, Viva has a Radiance now. So this was actually a pretty common build. And I think this would be considered a very fast timing for the time. Uh, 20 minute radiance on the Viva here. Doesn't have anything else, just boots and a little bit of region. <laughs> look at look at Rashad's tiny HP bar. That is so funny. Oh, man. Sea King already dropping an item. Oh, yeah, no backpacks. No backpacks, my friends. Absolutely none. That took a little while for those to be introduced. We're going to be down a few TIs before we see any backpacks or TP slots. All right, we got a swap. Stun. Windrunner taking a lot of damage, but she's going to be going down. <gasps> oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's a free red black hole. Can they do it? Does uh, Nirvana still stand a chance here? Probably not, honestly. That is four. Four dead. Banana? 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 Oh, I guess the bug didn't give vision at the time. <laughs> oh, look at that. I guess the bugs didn't give vision at this point in time. Interesting. <clears throat> no gold advantage indicator for the spectators either. Oh yeah, no gold advantage, no GPM or last hits or anything like that. I have no idea how many last hits uh, this Beastmaster has or what his net worth is or really anything about the boy. I couldn't tell you anything. The only way we can judge the net worth of any of these heroes is by just looking at the inventories. Also, what is the scrubby puck doing? Not carrying a TP scroll? Buddy. Oh, I think that's an urn. What a weird icon. That's a vanguard and a hood in the Beastmaster's inventory, so really just tanking up. Which is interesting. I guess you were just kind of trying to stay alive. It's not like the Beastmaster can actually do that much. Because there is no Aghanims at this time for this hero. At least not one that I remember. And it's definitely not the one that exists today. Wait, Vanguard? Yeah, that was a Vanguard. We got the Blink Dagger now on the Enigma, and we're working towards BKB. BKB was way better back then than it is today, because there was just less stuff that lets you bypass uh, that lets you bypass BKB. But at the same time, I think also people's understanding of the game. Oh my god, look at them! Wards and sentries, they have two separate inventory slots. Yeah, oh my, being a support sucked so much. I, I it, just, it sucked so fucking much. Because you had your... You needed to carry sentries, and you needed to carry observer wars, and you needed to carry dust, and you needed, <laughs> you needed to have a TP scroll, right? And then you needed boots, and at this point you have one goddamn inventory slot for an item! One inventory slot, right? Uh, just pain. I I would maybe that's why the tri lane was so popular for so such a long time. Because like the supports, a they didn't have as much money, and b they, you couldn't just have one position five handle all the wooding, because the position five just wouldn't have enough inventory space for it. That is just absolute suffering. I I. I don't even know. Alright. Windrunner finds a haste rune. Look at that. It's still just a haste rune. <laughs> that item is still on the floor. Alright, Viva now picking up a Vanguard. Look at that. Look at how strange that is. Yeah, I... I, I actually just find that absolutely bizarre. I do not know why the Viva goes for a Vanguard here. I'm pretty sure it still, at the time, didn't increase the... It didn't, it didn't, uh, it was worse on range heroes is what I'm trying to say. Very strange. 200 gold sentries, 100 gold voids, right? I don't know, something like that, probably, yeah. Voids were expensive. 
it wasn't that cheap to just put down wards. Like, it's not unreasonable at this point in time for the support to just have brown boots the entire game and spend all their money on consumables. I mean, look at this Vengeful. She's actually pretty rich here. She's got power treads and a magic one, and it's minute 25. And that's not a bad item set, honestly. That's pretty respectable. All right, Tai Lu is going to go ahead and see if they can push down Nirvana here. Didn't Vanguard have a 100% chance of damage reduction? I don't think so. I, I honestly couldn't tell you right now. But either way, we saw it only had 20 damage reduction on the Weaver. So that... It might just be like kind of a countermeasure to the Drow Ranger strategy. Right? Because with the Drow Ranger strat, you really rely on the Drow Ranger to give your entire team damage. But then your entire team does have damage. And so... That means a lot of different sources of damage. But each of them is going to be crazy high. It's just going to be higher than usual. That's when the Vanguard comes in. Reducing the hits from that Vengeful and the Puck and the Puck. I don't know. Makes sense to me. Alright, we've got a Roar. That was way too greedy. But we've got to swap out. Sea King still standing strong. Going to run out. Witch Doctor Ward doesn't really do that much. And seems like Nirvana can actually disengage this. Wow. Yeah, just barely. Definitely a greedy situation that was uh, mostly self-inflicted. <laughs> 11 kills was a 7. What's this league? Uh, no, this is Chinese Dota. Chinese Dota was famous for being very slow paced. Teams would take their time. We got a pipe on the Beastmaster. Very good. It's funny how many icons have changed. That's the one thing, like... Enigma Enigma is pretty much the same hero. Enigma seems unchanged compared to back then, but just almost all of the item uh, icons have actually been been changed compared to What is this? 2011? Yeah, 2011. All right. There's a black hole on too, but Earthshaker gets out. Quick little dunk. And it seems Ventral goes down, Enigma goes down. Witch Doctor is dead as well. So overall, a decent situation for Nirvana. It seems they might even get more war on the Urshaker. Urshaker is still standing, but this is just, I guess, this is why the Beastmaster built so tanky. And look at that. The Weaver with the Vanguard is actually just not really taking that much damage. Although, maybe now. Nope, Weaver finally goes down. We've got an Aegis on the Weaver, so the Weaver will be fine. Coming back into it. Power shot. Oh, buddy, why, why did you just stand there? Oh, don't take it. Not like that. Not like that, my friend. Why, why roar the Urshak? He had no ultimate or fissure. I don't know. Just wanted to get out, I guess. That was just the only target in range, likely. Yeah, Beastmaster was a big hero back in the day. I, I mean, he's still pretty popular today, but I think the Beastmasters we see today are just... They don't have that same presence that the hero used to have. Because he was really this hugely intimidating factor that would just run at your team and ask you to figure out a way to deal with it. Alright, that's a barracks down. So I don't know if Nirvana has something they can really do here. Oh, look at that. That's a mecha. You see that weird little banana croissant? I don't know what that is. That is a mecha. That's what that used to look like. What a weird icon, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah, Windrunner actually picking up a, a mecha pretty early here. Oh, that's drums with the charges. Drums used to have limited charges. And that's a four star. You can see because it's a staff and it forces people. <laughs> You're shaking your leg. I am shaking my leg. Sorry. Is it is it wobbling? Is something wobbling? Oh, I was just shaking the mic. Okay, sorry. I don't I don't mean to be shaking the mic. Do people still build mecha to nowadays actually? I think so, yeah. I think mecha is still an item that's being purchased pretty regularly. At least at TI ten I, I certainly saw it. Blink Dagger on the Enigma, still working on the BKB, finally got it. Like, you see how much slower the item progression is in this game? Right? Tai Lu is ahead by a lot. They have 16 kills. The Enigma got, like, 
a four-man black hole earlier. They took down Roshan. They have taken all outer towers. They have taken a Rax. And Enigma's full inventory is Blink, BKB, and Boots. Isn't that crazy? You just don't have anywhere near as much money back then as you do today. Like, modern Dota just gives you so much more in terms of resources. I don't know, kind of mind-blowing a little bit, right? All right. Oh, that's a that's a Helm of the Dominator, I think, on the Drow Ranger. <laughs> Helm of the Dominator. Very different item back then. Very different item back then. Um, So, Helm of the Dominator had the kind of like dominating a creep thing. But that was really more of a side effect of it. You bought Helm of the Dominator because it built out of Slice Steel and a Helm of Iron Will. Having, it had an amazing buildup. It gave a lot of like uh, armor, even gave some damage, and it gave a good, a good amount of life steal. And then it built into Satanic. You needed a Helm of the Dominator for Satanic. So that's kind of why you went for that item. You're going to see a lot of Helm of Dominator on heroes that would never buy it today, but that's because the modern Helm of the Dominator is a fundamentally different item. Like, these are not the same item at all. Helm of the Dominator back then was one of the best carry items in the game. You would see it all the time on all kinds of heroes. Today's Helm of the Dominator, of course, is still very powerful, but it just serves a very different purpose. All right, Blink BKB is now on Evoke. So I'm, I'm down for seeing how this works out. Also, the Weaver is looking nastier and nastier. I wouldn't be surprised if the Weaver picked up a heart by now. Radiance was very powerful back then and was usually actually just enough damage. You didn't really need anything else. So you would just tank up on Weaver. All right, we've got the stun right there. They're going to get the Venge, it seems. Oh, maybe. There you go. Very good. Puck goes in. No ultimate, though. And now the... Whoa, Drow Ranger gets roared. We got a black hole on two in the back lines. Sea King goes down. And I think that's probably gonna be game right there. Yeah, Nirvana actually gonna be losing. And GG is called. And yeah, that's... That's that, I suppose. <laughs> so the very first game of the International... Tai Lu versus Nirvana is gonna go into um, go. It's gonna go to Tai Lu in their favor here. Yeah, Viva has a heart. Look at that. I actually called that. That's funny. No, that was definitely the item build of choice back then. You just tanked up on the Viva. Radiance into tanking again. You, the items just weren't as strong, and you had much less money. So an item like like a Radiance was just enough damage it was just good enough anyway uh, i think this is just gonna kind of keep going a little bit until this is finally down radiant victory. the radiant have won and here's our end screen how interesting how interesting yeah um overall look at these golds per minute look at this viva had an amazing game 5 0 and 13 Right? Just absolutely god-tier game. 544 GPM. It's just nothing. Right? Vengeful Spirit, on the other hand, 133 GPM. Like, and, and most of that was just spent on, on consumables. Supports had it rough. That is crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Anyway, that was really interesting to me. I thought that was a lot of fun. I don't know if you guys enjoyed that. If you do, please let me know if you want to see more. We can just keep watching the international. Maybe I'll just keep watching on stream. And then on YouTube, we just see the interesting ones. I don't know. Let me know. Um, but I just thought it might be an interesting thing to do. And I'll see how it performs. And then we can go from there. Um... But yeah, anyway, uh, if you did, don't forget to leave a rating on the video. Don't forget to let me know that you enjoyed this. Yeah. And I'll see you guys around.